My name is Eileen Blaish. I'm a licensed clinical social worker and a somatic experiencing practitioner. And I had the occasion to learn about the smoothie rings about five years ago as I was attending one of Peter Levine's master classes. Hi, my name is Laura Melton and I'm a somatic experiencing practitioner. And a few years ago, took the SMOVI uh, coaching training. And we've learned an awful lot from the SMOVI um, training as well as from Peter. And I found out that the SMOVI rings were invented by an Austrian tennis player, a professional tennis player. And he had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And he developed the prototype for this exercise device that really helped his symptoms. I had recently become diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And in fact, I was in my somatic experiencing training in my third year, and it was brand new news to me. And so when I saw Peter using these smoothie rings, I wanted to learn more. I wanted to see if I could help my Parkinson's symptoms. So inadvertently, I became a smoothie coach and a licensed reseller. Years later, I have sold hundreds to SE practitioners. There's nothing about um, somatic experiencing from the smoothie world. In fact, it's a very novel market for the smoothie product. Um, when we became very curious um, watching Peter use smoothies, we, we really needed to figure out what he was doing and why he was doing it. And we're delighted to bring you an interview that we did uh, with Peter in Encinitas about how he's used smoothies. In my sessions, I do a lot with movement, with energy, in addition to basic tools that are taught in the SE training. People notice that I'm using these different tools and that they're interested in how the tools work, what kinds of instructions to give to the clients, what to look for, what kinds of caveats there are to using these different tools. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing this recording, is to say a little bit more specifically about work with the SMOVIs. Uh, various students have said, I think this is something that could actually facilitate, could enhance the movement kinds of work that you, you do. And the first thing that was brought to my attention was the Bellicon, that trampoline-like device, but with a very different kind of uh, bungee uh, cord, so you really get a rhythmical connection flow into the lower body, into through the legs, into the pelvis. But there was also the question of how about the upper part of the body? What could I use to facilitate work there, and what kinds of things could I, could I add? And that's when one of my students, again, came up with the, handed me a, a pair of Smovies and said, what do you think? I said, well, I don't really think anything. They look green. And uh, hmm. I picked them up, and I could feel the balls moving around. And then immediately, my body went into the movement. And I said, ah, OK. Where have you been? I practice on myself first to really get a feeling of what it might be able to do. And then I'll practice it with friends. And then if all goes well, then I'll start using it with clients. Well, first of all, of course, I always start to see uh, if they would get curious about them. You don't want to hand them something where they're not at least somewhat curious. Now, of course, when people are in states of trauma, the curiosity is greatly diminished, but you have to find some place. And often the person will pick it up and they'll look at it. And I'll just say, well, <laughs> how does it look to you? Well, it look, I mean, it's green and anything else. Hmm, it's got these bands, and I say, okay, anything else? And usually now that they're curious, they'll move them a little bit, and then, of course, the balls will, and they say, oh, I hear some kind of a sound. Huh, where do you think that sound is coming from? Well, I, I don't know. Well, what happens if you be curious about that? Huh, 
seems like there's something inside there. Something like what? And they say, maybe some kind of balls. And then sometimes, and this is sort of a trick question, I say, well, OK, how many balls does it feel like? And in other words, they're probably not going to feel that, at least not right away, but they start then moving them. And hmm, and oh, OK, well, maybe three or four. I say, ah, oh, I don't know, maybe that, that, that's, that seems like that to me. OK, and then, what, uh, and then they start to come towards the movement. Now, if I have one in my own hand, the set in my own hand, then I'll just mirror what they're doing. And then usually they follow along. And you're helping guide them through their uh, mirror neurons, if you like. Th that you're guiding them by, by f sensing your own body and also sensing where they are in their bodies. It's also like a, 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 an exploration together. And then since you're doing it together, as you move from shutdown to oh, sympathetic arousal to social engagement, you are already of having a pathway of engagement because you're both doing the things together and connecting with each other in this energetic way. Very often use them with people who are in shutdown states. Dissociation is associated with, with shutdown. Mm -hmm. People who are in a shutdown state, they just don't feel that they're here. or they, don't, they, they can't even relate to being here. You know, if you're working with somebody who's not there, who's not online, who's not able to act because you really, if a person's in shutdown, you really need, in general, first to move them out of shutdown. And again, there are various tools that I've used. I think some of them are standard now, like the VU and the VU connecting with the jaw, so connecting with the sense of power of arousal in, in terms of sympathetic activation. I, I do almost use the VU first, but not always, always use the VU first. But the, you know, because it's, it, it has a wide application. If the person is already in a sympathetic state, it helps them to downregulate. If they're in a shutdown state, it begins to bring them up a little bit so the lights go on. You can see kind of the lights behind the eyes turn on. And, um, and so I'll usually, usually start with that. Also, when I'm working with people, for example, where there's been a, a history of abuse, uh, that it's really important to help the person get a, sound, a sense of setting boundaries. So when I'm doing the vu with the jaw, vu, and then vu, so setting boundaries. So in other words, I don't really want to work with the person till they have some sense of a connection with their own sense of boundedness, of boundaries, because in a way, um, if they don't have that, then I may be transgressing on their boundaries without really realizing it. I mean, you, yeah, yeah, I mean, you use them in a similar way. Um, to, uh, to help them settle. But there you spend your emphasis is on the, the experience of settling. So noticing how they just move into a state of arousal, just enough to crest and then to discharge and to regulate and to downregulate. So I'll use it for that. If the person is in the shutdown, I'll need to be generally a little bit more vigorous first to get them enough out of the shutdown so that I can engage with them. Okay. Another thing that I use around with the VU and the jaw and the boundaries is to be able to help the person focus their strength and their aggression. Often when you do an exercise like this, either with the VU, that afterwards the person will feel tight in a certain area. Often it's in the throat. So often, then, I will have the person just put their hands on my wrists 
and just take the tension and move the tension into my arms. And again, the idea is not to work with rage. Uh, it's not even primarily to work with anger, but to direct the tension which has been retroflected, which they're, um, they're uh, putting onto themselves, to move it out so then you get, again, the sense of some uh, flow, of some energy flow. It also can be helpful in working with anger. And when I do that kind of an exercise, I will tell the person to say to the person, don't worry, um, if I need you to stop, I will just say stop. So they feel, because sometimes people are afraid to do it because they're afraid that they might be hurting me. So I kind of take that out of the way. And then again, have them take that energy, take that tension and move it into here. But you can also do it with the, with the jaw. Wow. So again, getting in contact with healthy aggression. And I use the Smobies also to, um, to build on that, to build this capacity of, yeah, I'm here, I'm alive. And ultimately, that's the core experience in altering the experience of trauma, is aliveness, is vitality. So all of these tools can be used to help the person connect with their sense of vitality and of aliveness. And in a way, you could say that it's a side effect of SE to bring people into aliveness, but you could also say it's the core purpose of SE is to bring people into aliveness, even greater than dealing with the different residue of the different traumas, is really to help the person. And I'll often use a sentence to have them say, I'm alive. I'm alive and I'm real. I'm alive and, my, and I'm here. So again, using different tools at different times to have that facilitate that core experience of vitality. We call that the vitality affect. It's different than an emotion, but it underlies all of the, especially the positive emotions. Contralateral movement is a, a way that the brain gets organized, that the hemispheres start to be in better communication with each other. And when I use this kind of movement, contralateral, I also have them often become aware of the movement of the contralateral uh, leg. So when they're going like this, they're almost like walking. So contralateral movement is, is integrating. And you want to do things that facilitate it, in, but that, of course, that aren't overwhelming for the person. So in other words, they're comfortable to make the movements. Then they can get the enjoyment and the cohesion, the coherence of cross-lateral movement. And they will often do something like this. Yeah. It's horizontal, but what you're doing is you're, ah, opening the chest. So the movement, if I'm, if I'm exaggerating, when the, is like this and like that, and often I will have the person move like this, and that, and this, and that. So you're really mobilizing the chest, opening the chest. Well, it's also a sense of power, a yes. sense of pride, of dignity. When people who are locked into shame postures, this is also a way of helping the person move out of the shame posture. The shame posture is like this. This is the pride or dignity posture. Well, we're using different movements, different tools to bring on the main uh, internal sensation systems. So you can use it, of course, with kinesthesia because mm -hmm. you're contracting muscles and releasing muscles. But you're also involving proprioception because you're getting information from where you are in space and time with any of these tools. So that's proprioception. As you move and start to open to different energetic sensations, that's experienced usually in the gut, in the viscera, and in, in the chest. And those are visceral sensations. So again, you're wanting to bring online all of the different 
bodily systems that, are, that fall under the category S in the psi band. Mm -hmm. So again, muscle tension and release, kinesthesia. Where are you in space? Integrating that with your tensional system, mm -hmm. proprioception. And then when you move through an activation cycle, what do you experience internally, viscerally, mm -hmm. interceptively? Well, these are all different types of interception. So those are the three main ones, the visceral and, and also uh, vascular. Very typically, people will, will, re, will say that they're feeling very warmth in their hand, or they may feel cold first, but then it shifts to warmth. So again, working with the three main systems, kinesthetic, proprioceptive, visceral, autonomic, vascular. Again, all of these tools can be used one at a time in combination with each other. But the key is in your ability as therapist to observe where the client is in regards to which system that they are, that's dominating, whether it is shutdown, dissociation, whether it's hyperarousal, sympathetic fight or flight, or whether it's ventral vagal contact, uh, connection. So these are all very distinct, as Stephen Porges has, has, has demonstrated so wonderfully in a whole series of research, is that these are really, really as important map to locate where your client is. And you have to be able to do that regardless of what tools you're using. And that's the key. And that's why so much of the early SE training is about learning to become aware of really where the person is and helping them become aware of it.